If you're anything like me, post-production can feel daunting. You've already summited a few major mountains, pre-production and production, and still have one major one ahead of you, post-production. We'll take you through the ins and outs of post and even some of the lessons we learned from other creatives along the way. Like any part of the production process, organization is key. While there isn't a right way, there are a lot of wrong ways to manage your media. When I begin any project, I use the following file structure. From here, I copy all the files to a different drive. Cloud backups and other remote storage options may also be appropriate, depending on the scale of the production. The key is always to backup. It only takes one time to learn this lesson the hard way. Keeping your footage organized within your NLE will also speed up your workflows. This can be done through creating folders and tags. If you're building out a longer format piece, it can also be beneficial to create sub-projects to keep things organized. This can be done by scenes, for instance. The next step is creating a rough cut, which is just like it sounds, a rough throw together of your timeline. So don't worry so much about the details, that will come later, as much as the shot-to-shot -shot flow of the timeline. Ollie Knight is an incredible creator and editor. When speaking to him about post-production, he gave us this advice. When the time comes, which to my mind is when you start trimming and deciding where can I remove stuff, where, how can I tell this story quicker. There's a huge amount of value in, in practicing the art of cutting stories down. Um, it really helps you focus on key story elements. Arbitrarily give yourself a test by making it half the length that you end up with, just to see, because it really makes you focus. You get to the stage where you can see the, the big picture quicker, and that's where you can then allow yourself that freedom to focus on that story and really refine it. This happened with one of the scenes in our film that was supposed to illustrate the change of our main character's heart. It was too quick, too jarring, and ultimately unnecessary. Sometimes the most difficult and effective decision can be to cut something out entirely. Once you've got your edit on lock, it's time to bring it to life with color and sound design. The look you develop for your film should be intentional and motivated. Don't just use teal and orange because you love Michael Bay. When dialing in your look, you should consider the time period, mood, genre, and visual style you're going for. Ideally, you shot the film with these things in mind, so this will go a long way to making a look really sell. One tip we received from Denver Riddle of ColorGradingCentral.com was to push your grade past normal to see what's really happening and then dial it back to where it feels right. Then make sure the shots match shot to shot so as to not distract the viewer. Even the most novice cinephile can feel the jar of a mismatched grade. Once the sound design is locked and your graphics and effects are in place, you're ready to hit the magic button, export. Finally, you've made it through the entire process. Wrong. Who cares about your video if no one sees it? There are many paths to get views for your work. This could be through film festivals, online campaigns, or more formal distribution. No matter the medium, it's best to get views early and often, and then loop in your network and share, share, share. You could even host a virtual premiere and entice viewers with incentives such as Q&As with the cast and crew. With all that being said, sometimes it's just important to get your story out there because your story matters. We hope you've enjoyed this mini series, and if you'd like to see more content like this, let us know in the comments below. And until next time, go out there and share your stories. Finding a way to force yourself to do it is really important because there's always these walls that pop up that you have to just burst through one after another and they just keep popping up. Force yeah. these deadlines on yourself because that causes you to push through. And often that's all it's needed is the motivation to push through.